Hi, Sharon Craig here with you again, talking about my cutting corners ruler. If you didn't see the video one that had all the basics, I encourage you to, to check that one out first. This one's kind of the second step. Another thing that it does, the ruler does, is that it's going to allow you to create secondary designs. So just real quickly, the ruler has these lines, two sets of lines, one in quarter inch increments, one in half inch increments, so that you can choose the size that you want. I do have patterns out, so if you would like to start by trying a pattern that introduces Reduces the concept. This pinwheel one, partial to pinwheels, is one I'm going to be demonstrating here with you in just a couple of minutes. So this is a real easy way to get started with the ruler. If you have the ruler and one pattern, I'm hoping that you will then be able to expand that and to go ahead and do a lot with your own blocks. So this is the ruler. This is the way the packaging comes. And in the package, you're going to get a booklet that gives you all the step-by-step -step instructions that you need. Smack dab in the middle of the booklet, there's a set of charts that have a lot of the secondary designs that I came up with. It also tells you in the booklet how you can design your own. So if you don't like one of the ones that I've got, or let's say you've been using the ruler for a while and you've used all of these, what else can I do? read the part that talks about how you can design your own. So we've got the, the charts there. You pick the one that you want. If we're doing this partial to pinwheels here, we're going to start with squares. That's just exactly our pattern started. And we, once we have our squares, then we're going to cut off the corners. And it tells you in the ruler exactly what size to cut off. So you lay your ruler down on the size that it tells you and cut. And you're left with a piece that has the seam allowances on it. My ruler does all the math for you so you don't have to do math. Once you cut off the corner, the piece of the fabric that is under the ruler is always waste. Take it and put it away. Put it in the trash can, put it in a, a box that says cut away corners if you just can't bring yourself to throw it away. I don't blame you. I don't throw them away either. But I don't want to leave it up on my cutting table because I might get confused and think that it is one of the good ones. So I cut the pieces away and now I've got my pieces that are what I'm going to be putting my replacement triangles back on to. So this is my shape. Then I cut the replacement triangles according to the picture here. I use three inches. I read across, it tells me four and a fourth inch square slice twice. So to do this, like the picture with the red and the white, I cut a square of white and a square of red at four and a fourth. And then I'm going to sew these pieces together. And when I do that, I'm very explicit in the directions here about which triangle that you put on the right and which piece that you put on the left. Believe it or not, these simple pinwheels are very directional. And if you don't always have the light color on the right and the red on the left, you're going to have some pinwheels spinning right and some pinwheels spinning left, which is okay if that's what you want. But you've got to make sure that that's what you want. So always put the triangle on the right on top of the triangle on its left left, position those two triangles face to face, start sewing from the square corner towards the point. Once you get all of these sewn, this is what you've got, all sewn together like this. And then I match them up with the square that they go together with. And when you put these pieces face to face, there, you're going to see that your replacement triangle is going to hang over just that little bit equally on each side. So when you do that, you're going to start sewing where the notch is and sew straight across. And when you've done that, then you have all the pieces that you need to make your pinwheel. So four of these make the pinwheel block. Whoops, put that on the wrong side. Won't do any good if I sew it to the wrong side, will it? And just like that, you've got a pinwheel. You see the quilt on the wall behind me that has all those pinwheels. And people look at that and they think, how in the world did she get all of those into that quilt? So this, you can start with plain squares to do it, or you can start with blocks that you've already got in the house. This is an example of some anvil blocks that I've got down here. And they're, they're a nice block, but they're kind of boring just by themselves. So if I was to take my ruler, 
position it on a corner, cut away a corner, and then sew a replacement back on. Here's one right here. If I put that back on, and let's say I did it on two sides, how much more interesting the block gets. And when you have four of these and you put them together, you're going to get a secondary design. Another one of the patterns is called Anvil Magic. So there's your anvil block right there. So you could again start with the pattern and create the secondary design as you see on here. Or you can take some blocks that you have in the house. Another one of my favorites is this block here. I had made all of these blocks from a set of templates and pattern by Terry Atkinson called Winner's Bouquet. I loved the templates. I loved the blocks until I got them all made. And I didn't like the colors that I had chosen to make. To me, they just had too much white. They were just too flat. And yet I'd already invested all that time in making them. So what I did was I cut off corners using my ruler. I reattached the piece triangles, in this case pinwheels, back on. And when I had the, the four blocks together, I have all these pinwheels popping up all over the surface of the quilt. When I made my quilt, I did different size pinwheels all over the quilt. So they don't have to all be the same size. This is just one of the designs, the pinwheel. It's probably one of the fastest, but that doesn't mean it's the only one. This is one of the ones also in the directions here, where it's four triangles sewn together. When four of these come together, it's when you start getting really fun secondary designs. And I colored these with just two fabrics, with the red being in the middle, but you could have done it in three fabrics or four fabrics, super scrappy, it doesn't matter. Here's another design, another one of my favorites. I guess they're all my favorites or I wouldn't have included them in the book. But this is a star. If, if you think about any block that can be split corner to corner, you can create these secondary designs using it. This isn't sewn together, so I've got the luxury of being able to separate these on my little flannel board here and show you the four pieces. Sometimes I will create my secondary pieces. I will put them on my block and I'll think, oh, I didn't like this big red square in the middle after all. So what if I separated my blocks and put sashing in a cornerstone? So now I've got a totally different block. So you don't have to be locked into anything just because you've already done it. Feel free to play with these pieces to your heart's content. There's lots and lots that you can do with this secondary design. Let me show you a, a set of blocks that I made years and years and years ago. Because quite honestly today, I don't make big blocks. I like small blocks. But I made this, these blocks years ago, all these Ohio Star blocks. And they're 12-inch blocks. And I was thinking I could do something with them, and I laid them out, and I just, oh, the big gaping white hole in the center there just didn't, didn't do much for me. Notice the difference when all I did was add a few minutes to the total equation of my quilt. I cut off a few full corners and sewed back on a few simple replacement pieces, and now I've got that little pop of red and I've got that pinwheel in there. And if I did that, if I had a lot more blocks and did it all over the quilt, all those blocks would have taken on a lot more interest and a lot more excitement. They don't have to all be the same red and beige fabrics. You could use lots of different fabrics, make them as scrappy as your blocks. There is no limit to what you can do color-wise or design-wise. You could do pinwheels, you can do the stars, you could do the square in a square. It just opens up so many possibilities for you. So if you're looking forward to playing with this ruler, be, in, be of one mind that there's not just the one thing. In the previous video I cut lots of odd shapes, what I called etc. shapes. Now I've introduced secondary designs and in the next video I'm going to show you a really really cool use of the ruler and that's to allow you to make strip setting triangles without strip piecing and without almost no waste. I won't say any waste, but with almost no waste. So stay tuned. Come back in a few minutes. Incidentally, if you haven't gotten your ruler yet, check your local quilt shops. Remember it's called Cutting Corners Ruler. And if you can't find it in your shop and they're not willing to get it, you can go to Cozy Quilt website www.cozyquilt.com. 
Thanks so much. I've enjoyed visiting with you this morning. See you soon.